Okay. So we got our uh, Scorpito bowls here, right? And what we're gonna do is brush on our clear glaze. So we have the Shaner's clear here, and that's what you guys are gonna be using. We want to make sure our tools are all clean. So we don't contaminate our glaze. And our clear glaze turns into, you know, a green or something like that. I lifted it up here just because it's easier to work with. For right now. Stuff off the now. Yep. Stuff is off the bottom. Spencer figured it out. It was a group effort. It was a group effort. Live together, die together. Right. right. So we have uh, some more clear containers here, right? So people are glazing this, you know, grab a clear container. So you can grab your glaze that you need and set up your station here, right? So the brush people may have found that brushing your glaze on you get little inconsistencies so you really want to flood the brush when you're brushing the glaze on so when you have it just let it drip off don't scrape it against the side right we really want to flood the brush so we can get into all these little cracks and crevices, right? So just like brushing our slip with our bowl overturn, we'll do the same thing. And this will dry pretty quickly, right? So flood our brush, brush over, let it dry. And if I dab my brush on too, it'll help get in all these little cracks and crevices. So I'll just continue on. Until I get all the way around. And just like the bowl when we're slipping it we want to put on two coats so when I brush one on like that I'll let it dry before I go back over it this is a pretty runny glaze So it should fill in the graffito marks that you guys carved, right? And now that I'm all the way around here, I'll continue on, right? So I can still see the texture. I can even see the black slip a little bit but with each successive glaze covering more of it will disappear right and if i continue brushing this i'm just going to be brushing the glaze off right so dunk your brush Brush it on, brush the glaze on, and then just let it sit 
if I continue brushing it, it's just going to remove. I don't want to do that, right? And it's okay if you see the texture. I want to see the texture a little bit. All right. If I brush too much on, it's going to cover things and be a little bit more mottled and cloudy. So if you do one coat, one coat is enough to get a nice glossy surface. If you do two coats, it's enough to get a real nice high gloss on your work. But don't do three, right? Three, it starts to get a little cloudy and then it will um, cover up your designs, right? So these are so big, that brushing is what you want to do with this, right? I think I'm coming up on my I started. Okay. So there we go. I can flip this over and then brush around the rim here and then do the inside. So do the inside the same way. Right. I'll start with my bottom first and then work my way up the uh, walls. The inside might take a little bit more time just because it's so odd. Okay, so as I'm brushing, you can see the strokes on the inside, right? So we'll do two coats of that on the inside um, to finish up these bowls and then make sure our bottoms are wiped clean and they're ready to go in the kiln, right? We'll set them back over here on the glaze carts by the gas kilns and we'll be ready to fire. Um, any questions about brushing on your bowls? I want you guys to brush. That's the thing, right? So, yeah, you can dip, right? So the idea is that, you know, we're, you know, using all the methods of glazing here, right? Because once you leave here, you go to another ceramic studio and you make something that's huge, you know how to brush, right? So, yeah, that's a, I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, right? total buzz kill right so brush your bowls you'll be happy you did um, then I wanted to run through a couple of other examples here of using uh, washes like I have a orange wash and a red wash here these are on the slip station next door and these are our examples right with the washes here uh, with the temple white over the washes and then this is the clear over the washes we have our green our red our blue and uh, our black on the bottom again don't use yellow because yellow burns out right so uh, even with the temple white here you get a really nice variation so how the washes are used we want to shake up our bucket I'll set these just over to the side here I'm going to use this plate here to bring out some definition 
These might smell a little bit, so just <laughs> be warned. So these washes are really runny. And we'll do a, uh, let's see, kind of like a half and half. We'll do red on the inside, orange on the outside. So it's kind of like watercolors. What I'm doing is brushing over the surface here. Kind of haphazardly. I really want the orange to flow into those cracks. Right. And then I'll wipe my brush off and switch to the red. Sorry to interrupt Tiffany. Woo! The red is stinky. The red is real stinky. Right? So I'm going to use the red on the center here. Now you can even kind of blend some things together. Right? So fairly messy right now. The way that these work best is to fill in the color and then with a white, uh, with a wet, wet sponge um, is brushing, wiping off the surface. So we have all that color inlaid into that design and it really makes things pop. Right, so um, you can see my octopus a little bit more. It's got a red head and orange tentacles and it really blends the surface, right? So if you're interested in blending some colors, this is the way to do it, right? Do it on bisqueware, don't do it on your greenware. Don't do it on your dry clay, because when you wipe, you're just gonna wipe your clay away, right? So um, do this on bisqueware. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt your bisqueware, right? So for example, you know, I've got this really lovely green scrofito bowl here. And if I wanted to add a little bit of uh, color, I can fill in that area. And then with my sponge, I can wipe the surface away. dab it a little bit so then my uh, scrapito design here has that little bit of red that fills in right so um, if you have something that you want to add a little bit of color to use the washes right these are going to be next door um, any questions about the washes at all okay and then last little bit conveniently I've got the temple white here and we're gonna do a, a half and half dip with this so just to get back into the swing of glazing. And talk about overlaps. This is a pretty classic 
combination of like 1950s, 1970s uh, stoneware. So our glaze is mixed up. What I'm going to do is dip this at a diagonal uh, halfway uh, or two thirds of the way. Then I'll have a nice band that runs across the diagonal here, right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'll dip the clear first. I think the white will be really nice over the clear. So it's fairly easy, right? I got my bucket here. I can angle my plate in, uh, dip it. Just let it drip dry for a second. Catch that drip. That's what it looks like on camera. Right? While that is drying, While this is drying, if I had other things to do in glaze, that's what I would do right now. But for the sake of the demo and moving things along, there you go, it's dry enough. All right? I wanna make sure that I'm handling it correctly. So same angle, I'm gonna dip this. About two thirds of the way. And then I'll have this nice band that runs across the whole diagonal, right? So um, other glaze combinations that we have over here, right? Like the blue salt over the right screen, the rutile wash over the purple haze. They were dipped like this. But if you want to dip like this, and then turn it around and dip the other way, then you'd have uh, the bands, the overlaps running this way, right? So pretty classic 70s stoneware glaze application. Um, so just something to think about, right? And as we're kind of closing the semester down, I have these little instructions up everywhere. So uh, if you have questions, please refer to these. It goes through dipping, overlapping, brushing, pour and roll, right? And then of course, if you have questions, feel free to ask me, right? Uh, any questions about this stuff? Right? Cool. So we'll get to work. I'll let you guys, you know, finish up your work next door. Right? I'll check in with you. And uh, if people had stuff in the wood kiln, we can go down and pick it up. Right? Um, so I'm gonna clean up here. We'll meet up next door, and I'll come get you guys. We're going down to the wood kiln. Good. Cool. I'll let you have at it.